Hello viewers. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I created a 20th anniversary Mustang GT350 convertible from various kits. As you're probably aware, there was only one plastic model kit of a 20th anniversary Mustang produced. It was made by MPC in 125th scale in hatchback form. I wanted to have my model match my real car, which is a convertible 5 liter with CFI fuel system. I bought a 124th scale 84 Mustang convertible kit put out by Monogram, which I was going to convert to a GT350, but it just had too many things that were not correct. The most notable is the lack of a front air dam with integrated fog lights. This kit also has the rocker panel trim, which the GT350 lacks. Also, instead of a SVO style thin line impact strip, this kit has the wide molding that runs from the back edge of the front fender to the front edge of the rear fender. There's also a 5.0 stamped on the fender where the GT350 running horse badge goes and GLX is imprinted on the deck lid next to Mustang. Some other very minor details missing are the GT style dash panels and interior trim. The biggest bother for me is the front air dam, or lack thereof. I bought a 124 scale monogram 1985 SVO that looked like its air dam might be a perfect match. I really don't like butchering models and luckily this kit was missing some parts. Now I had pretty much everything I needed to start. And so armed with a set of sharp knives and extra band-aids, I began my adventure. The first order of business is the front nose assembly modifications. Here you can see the 1984 Mustang nose and the 1985 SVO air dam side by side. Using an X-Acto knife, I first removed the lower part of the 84's nose along the bottom edge of the body impact molding. Then I separated the 85 SVO air dam along the bottom edge of its impact molding. I actually left a little extra material just to be safe. You can always take material off, but putting back on what you cut off could pose quite a challenge. When the parts are separated, this is what's left. Note that the SVO air dam is not bowed out as the headlight panel from the 84 Mustang. Also, the outer front corners of the SVO air dam are ever so slightly wider than the 84 headlight panel. I used a file to carefully shape the air dam to match the contours of the headlight panel. Notice also that the filler panel on the SVO air dam will need to be trimmed to match the wheel well opening. This should be done after the parts are permanently attached. Here is the air dam before I did the final trimming to it. It still has part of the original bumper strip on it. You can see here the bow when the parts are dry fitted. To correct this, the SVO air dam should be shaped to the impact strip and not the other way around. It is important that it's done this way or else the nose won't fit right on the car. To shape the air dam, I simply heated the part with a hair dryer and adjusted it in small increments until everything lined up. Be careful not to burn yourself on the plastic. It will work very easily. If you do get any small warps, it should sand out fairly easily. Sand down the mating surface of both parts accordingly to achieve a good fit. Constant dry fitting is always a good idea and will net the best results. Using the finishing sandpaper, smooth out all the surfaces that were shaped using progressively finer and finer sheets. Once the finishing is complete, it's time to permanently attach the two halves. I would suggest also dry fitting the parts to the convertible's body to ensure proper fit and alignment. The next order of business is the convertible's body needs to have some work done to it. First thing I did was to remove the 5.0 badge from the front fenders and the GLX emblem from the rear deck lid. I used an X-Acto blade to slice off the numbers and letters, then used sandpaper to smooth things out. This next part requires patience and careful execution. I used a small file to remove the side body molding and rocker panel trim from the car. 
Please note that there should be a raised body line left intact that follows the fender flares. If you need a good reference, take a look at the 85 SVO kit body the air dam came from. Also, any door edge lines can be cleaned up with a hobby knife blade. Originally, I was going to glue a strip of plastic onto the side of the car to make the thin red body strip the GT350s all have. I didn't think it would look right, so I decided to try carving it into the body. Using a good straight edge, metal ruler as a guide, I grabbed my hobby knife and scribed a couple of deep lines into the side of the body. I estimate I went about halfway through the thickness of the plastic. Once I had the lines down, I used a pocket knife to widen the grooves I had just scribed in. The pocket knife was used since it's thicker than the hobby knife blade. Although not a work of art, I think it came out pretty well. Now that the nose and body work is pretty much done, it's time to attach them. It's pretty straightforward. Glue the nose to the body. Before completing the rest of the kit, there is one last bit of work to be done. The lower radiator support on the kit's frame may need to be trimmed to clear the bottom of the air dam. Trial fit the pieces and determine how much to trim off if needed. On mine, it only required about a sixteenth of an inch cut away from the front. I later found that simply trimming the sides of the radiator support probably would have sufficed. From here on out, continue the rest of the build as you would build any other model. I'm not well versed in painting and detail, so you're on your own for that part, as you'll see here. For this project, I used standard automotive primer. Once all the parts were dry, I lightly sanded everything smooth. For the color coat, I used Oxford White touch-up paint from a spray can. Several very light coats gets the job done. Here, I should have used filler to remove the gaps between the outer headlights and bumper cover. The decals I used were all from the GT350 hatchback kit, which, as mentioned before, and as a matter of luck, there were two sets in there. Overall, I like the way the model turned out. I hope this video will help you with your custom Mustang build, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe.